In this section, we're going to be discussing quadratic inequalities. Now, one of the big properties that we had for linear inequalities was that if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol flips around. Well, that's gonna be true for any inequality. Now, quadratic inequalities, there are a lot of different ways we have of solving them and showing what their solution set is. So, let's first talk about what a quadratic inequality is. Naturally, it's gonna be something that looks like a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c, and let's say less than zero. Now this less than could also be greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, it just has to be an inequality, okay? So one of the big things that helps us out here is knowing what the shape is for something that is quadratic, right? Quadratic means the squaring shape, it's the squaring function, the parabola that we're going to be talking about much later this semester. But it's something that looks like this, right? Now when we graph this guy, he could be pretty much anywhere. But for the examples that we're going to be seeing with quadratic inequalities, as long as a is positive, so let's make a note here, so this is if that lead coefficient is positive, that's the shape that we take. Now we're going to be looking at where this would intersect the x-axis. So imagine this is the x-axis, right? And our job in solving the inequality is, the inequality kind of becomes, you know, on, it goes on the back burner for a little bit, because our primary job is to figure out where does the, in, uh, where does the quadratic equal zero. So you're going to go back to solving quadratic equations in order to do this section. Now, when it comes to the inequality here, like I said, it could be less than, it could be greater than. Please understand this. When we're talking about being greater than or less than in terms of a graph, this means that you are greater than zero. Below means that you are less than zero, okay? So for these quadratic inequalities, we see that we start off being greater than zero for this piece right here because he is above the x-axis. And then he dips below the x-axis and so right here is where he is negative. And then beyond that he becomes a positive value again. So depending on what the inequality says to us, we know what we're looking for. If it says less than zero, we're going to be looking for the region in between those solutions. If it says the quadratic needs to be greater than zero, we're going to be looking for these two sections that are going to be going on the outside. So let's take a look at an example so we can understand what's going on here. Let's see if we can make things easy for us, okay? So let's start off with x squared plus 6x minus 27 is greater than 0. Now, in terms of what we just saw with this little diagram up here with that little picture, my expectation is that we have something that's quadratic, so he's going to look like a parabola. Okay, that's what I expect to see. And I also expect this. I expect it to intersect my x-axis in two spots, here and here. That's what I expect. Now this inequality wants to know where is the parabola, where is the graph greater than zero, which means where is it above the x-axis? Well, it's above the x-axis for this section right here and that section right there. Now what does that mean for the x-axis? That means that you're going to be looking for this section on the number line that's over here to the right and the section that's here to the left of uh, of those solutions. So all we have to do is we have to look at this as an equation, find those critical numbers, and we're going to be good to go. So I always go into this little, you know, bubble here, and I go to a different color and I rewrite this. Instead of having an inequality, I write this as an equation. So x squared plus 6x minus 27 equals 0. And then I just solve this. So fortunately for us, this is something that factors, and it factors as x plus 9 times x minus 3. So
solving this by using the zero factor theorem, we end up with x is equal to negative 9, or x equals positive 3. Now let me talk to you about what these numbers are. We refer to these numbers as our critical values. These are the values at which your expression, your polynomial expression, can change signs from being positive to negative. Because when you look at this picture, this is a continuous graph. There are no jumps, there are no leaps, there are no gaps. So the only way that this, the only way these output values change sign is when they go through and cross the x-axis. So if I put these guys here in order, that means this is negative 9 and this is positive 3. So it means if you graph this quadratic from negative infinity to negative 9, you're going to be above the x-axis. Between negative 9 and 3, you're going to be below the x-axis. And when you plug in values of x greater than 3, you're going to be above the x-axis. If you don't believe me, plug in values. Plug in something over here like negative 10. If you plug in negative 10, it's going to be greater than 0. Plug in something in between negative 9 and 3, like 0, right? If I plug in 0 and 0, I get negative 27, which would be below 0. So it would be less than 0. And if I pick something greater than 3, I would then be on the upswing where anything that I plug in that's greater than 3 is going to give me a value for that polynomial that's greater than 0. So the x's are our input values we're trying to see what the output value would be if it's positive or negative, right? And so looking at this picture right here, let me just kind of condense this into a different number line. I've got negative 9, I've got 3. Where is this guy greater than 0? On these outside pieces. So over here, and over here. And I know what you're saying, Mr. Craig, these values are not greater than zero. These values aren't greater than zero, but when I plug these values into that expression, I get something greater than zero. If I plug in anything from this region, four, five, you know, 6.2, and I plug it in here, I'm going to get something that's greater than zero. Now, notice the, that this inequality said greater than zero, but not equal to. So that means these guys are going to stay as open circles. So the interval notation for this example is from negative infinity to negative nine, parentheses, union, three to infinity. Right. Now, I want you to understand that I could change some small things here, and it's not really going to change a whole lot in terms of our work. So if I were to change this inequality and say x squared plus 6x minus 27 is less than 0, it's not going to change the fact that I still have the same critical values. I would still have critical values of negative 9 and positive 3. However, if I see that this says less than zero, that means I'm looking for where that parabola would be below the x-axis. And he's below the x-axis between these input values of negative nine and three. So when it's greater, it's gonna be these outside pieces. When it's less than, it's that part of the parabola that dips underneath the x-axis. And so you would have parentheses negative 9 to 3. And again, I can make another change here. What if I say this is less than or equal to? Well, if it's or equal to, that means the numbers are still the same. They're just now included, which means in the interval notation, they would have brackets. All right, so let me show you another way of doing this because some of these polynomials and some of these expressions are going to be it get a little bit more complicated and I want you to have a, like a foolproof way of doing this. So we took that expression and we factored it. 
and we could break it down in terms of the two factors, x plus 9 and x minus 3. And so what I'm going to do here is what's called a sign table. And what I do is that I look to see what sign I get from each factor individually. And then what happens when I bring it all back together. So here is my setup. I have two critical values that we have already identified because we already knew the factors. Those critical values happened at negative 9 and positive 3. All right. So here's what I need you to understand and remember about these factors. Think back to how you used to graph lines using that slope intercept form. This has a slope of 1. It's a positive slope which means it's going to go up from left to right which means if you can imagine that this is your um, this is your x-axis with a positive slope it has negative values until it hits that x-axis and then it's going to be spitting out positive values so it's below and then it's above well we want to know where does it hit the x-axis what makes it equal to zero well we already know that because we have already identified these critical values see x plus nine is equal to 0 at negative 9. So I'm going to write 0 right here. And you think back to the example I just did. Here is your x-axis. If I plug in values that are less than negative 9, you're underneath it, which means you're getting negative output values. But then you're going to cross at negative 9, and he's going to be positive the rest of the way, which means for any value that you plug in, in any of these other intervals it's going to be positive. The only time that this guy is going to be 0 is going to be at negative 9. Other than that he's going to be positive on one side and negative on the other. And as long as these guys have a positive coefficient they're going to go negative, 0 at the critical value, positive the rest of the way. Look at x minus 3. His critical value is 3 because that's what makes him equal to 0. So I'm going to put a zero right here. Since this is a positive, that means he's going to be negative in every region. Then he hits the x-axis. And since he's increasing, he's now going to be positive everywhere else beyond that. And so each of these rows gives us a pattern for the sign for each factor. Okay, so here's what we have. For the factor x plus 9, he goes negative, he hits that x-axis, and then he's going to be positive the rest of the way. For x minus 3, he's negative until he hits the x-axis when x is 3, when he becomes 0, and then he's positive the rest of the way. So if we know what each individual factor becomes in terms of their signs, we can look at the overall picture and the entire expression purely in terms of signs. Because here's the thing. If the inequality says you want to be greater than zero, it doesn't matter if you are a big positive or a little positive. All that matters is that you're positive. And that's going to be enough to satisfy that inequality. And that's what this last row is here for. Okay, So this last row is where we look at what happens for each of these um, for each of these uh, uh, excuse me, intervals. So right here, in this region that's to the left of negative 9, you would have a negative factor and a negative factor, so two negatives would multiply to give you a positive. In this middle region, you've got a positive and a negative factor, so that gives you a negative. And in the far right, you have two positive factors, so these guys multiply to give you a positive. So this tells you the pattern of this sign. Now we already knew what it was going to be because we know what the picture is because of past experiences with x squared. But this tells me that this expression is positive, then negative, then positive. But at these critical values, it's zero. Think about this. Zero times negative is zero. A positive times zero is still zero. So regardless, of the direction of the inequality. This polynomial expression goes positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. And look at the graph. It goes from being positive to zero, negative, 
zero, and it becomes positive again. And so for this inequality, we wanted to know where were you greater than zero. Greater than zero means a positive section. So that means here and here. And when we put that down on the number line, it corresponds to these two regions. So that's how you would use um, a sign chart. So let's do another example. Let's do it with a picture. Let's do it with a sign chart. And let's see what we come up with.